Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. You know, Romeo and Juliet is easily the most iconic, memorable romance slash tragedies ever. <clears throat> and you'd think there'd really be anything left to say about it, but I'm gonna hear it be here to talk about two different reimaginings of it. First is Romeo and Juliet, the manga, and the other one is the Romeo and Juliet comic, oh, sorry, I mean graphic novel, called Romeo and Juliet, the War. First, the manga. The manga, well, it's the setting is that it's in a modern-day Tokyo, and it's a rivalry between two rival clans of Yakuza. <clears throat> and while it sounds interesting, but they never really do anything with it. It's supposed to take place in modern day Tokyo, but you know, they, everyone still talks and acts like in the original play, like in 16th century Italy. You know, um, why everyone still talks in the same, pretty much, it's almost the exactly the same as the play, line for line. The, the, it looks interesting, but it really isn't. It's just the play, but, you know, they made everyone look Japanese. Or, you know, I guess, um, also, like, they made uh, some more examples. Like, they make, like, Romeo, like, some sort of rock idol, but he never sings or plays any of his instruments. Or they made... Um, like a um, Escalus uh, detective, but they still call him Prince for some reason, even though he's a detective. And like I keep saying, it's supposed to be modern day Tokyo, but <clears throat> they never take full advantage of this new setting that they're taking place in. <clears throat> Ultimately, I give this re specific reimagining about two out of five stars. You know, um, you know, it's just. Felt lazy, but now I'm going to talk about <clears throat> Romeo and Juliet: The War, and um, <clears throat> this is the exact opposite. Like, I mean, sometimes it kind of sounds ridiculous because it's uh, essentially this time and around it's a rivalry between like a race of cyborgs and a race of genetically enhanced superhumans, but. It's actually really entertaining. One thing that I uh, especially appreciated or really liked was they actually explain why the Montagues and Capulets hate each other. And I know I probably shouldn't be focusing on that. I should be focusing on, you know, Romeo and Juliet's love and how the hatred is tearing them apart. But between the Montagues and Capulets is tearing them apart. But it's nice. But it's a nice touch and. <clears throat> I really like it. And um, another thing is, um, <clears throat> once again, like the whole setting is, um, I guess, like a future Earth that's been torn apart by war. And, <clears throat> and uh, well, um, you know, it takes full advantage of its setting. You know, they don't talk like they do in the original play. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, there's uh, there's all sorts of cool stuff like, uh, pr like uh, they're, they're like whenever they have like the fight, there's always like some sort of collateral damage. So now they're like entire crowds of people saying like, you know, get out of our get out of our city, you trouble causing bastards, so forth. And um, it, it stays like just close enough to Romeo and Juliet that it's recognizable as Romeo and Juliet, but it stays far enough away that it's recognizable as its own thing. <clears throat> it keeps its own identity. And for that, I give it a full five out of five stars. It's well written, well <clears throat> well drawn, and. Um, because there's a clear contrast of just looking at the Montagues and Capulets, and it's just highly recommended in my opinion. Go find this now is like first chance you get. Way um. Till next time.
I'm your host, signing out. See you later.